Welcome in to the Western Conference semifinals. As this evening, the one seed, Orange County SC, play host to Reno 1868, who won away from home in their first round matchup against Real Monarchs. Tonight's matchup of the game is brought to you by Destination Irvine. Chris Whittingham alongside the former Manchester United goalkeeper, Gary Bailey, for commentary of this one. Orange County getting some good news ahead of this one as FC Cincinnati have been eliminated from the USL playoffs. Therefore, the road to the USL Cup final goes through Irvine, California. If they win their final two games in the Western Conference playoffs, they'll be hosting the cup final. That little bit extra on this one. Orange County, though, have to take care of business tonight against Reno 1868. As we take a look now at our Shire player to watch, and that is Michael Seaton. Michael Seaton, absolutely brilliant. He's strong, he's quick, he's brave. Look how he takes that hit. It's a burst of acceleration, and he is a man that Reno will have to keep an eye out for tonight because he has everything in his locker, the young Jamaican. And you'll see he scores, he scores goals off the ground, he scores them in the air, and of course he's got Thomas Eni Volson next to him, who's a great supplier of opportunities. Look how brave he is there, takes the hit from the goalkeeper and heads the ball into the back of the net. And he is going to be such a problem for Rina. And you know what? He can score them from one yard out as well. Here it goes, <laughs> and he gets the back of the net. So, yeah, great time to be in form and uh, Wonderful, wonderful player is Michael C. Who is our Shire player to watch. A hat trick and a 4-0 victory over St. Louis last weekend. Let's take a look now at Reno 1868. The visitors, another clean sheet and another solid goalkeeping performance for Matt Persano. Yeah, he's been unbelievable. In fact, looking besides that clean sheet you mentioned against Real Monarchs, if you exclude Las Vegas lights, he's conceded only one goal in the last seven matches. That is phenomenal. Not just him, of course, his defense, but... Really, it's about Reno and their tight defense up against Orange County and their wonderful attack. And Reno, 1868, winning 1-0 in Salt Lake City on a 90-second minute winner from Brian Brown. Let's take a look now at the full bracket. Only one team left to get to the conference final round, and that is either Orange County or Reno, 1868. If Orange County win, they host Phoenix. If Reno win, then they'll go away from again to the Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex for the Western Conference Finals. The East matchup is already set as New York Red Bulls 2 went away from home today over FC Cincinnati 1-0. They'll be away to Louisville City, who beat Bethlehem Steel by two goals to nil. But it's the Western Conference we're concerned with this evening. Orange County, who turned in a very impressive 4-0 victory in the first round over St. Louis, will try and make a two from two in the postseason as they take on Reno 1868. Lineups and first half kickoff is coming up next. New Canada Dry Ginger Ale and Lemonade. The perfect blend of real ginger taste with a splash of real juice. Are you ready to taste Nirvana? Hey, honey, do we want to taste Nirvana? Yeah, sure. How long have you been sitting in my yard? Since Tuesday. Try New Canada Dry Ginger Ale and Lemonade. Live scenes from the Champions Soccer Stadium. 
Orange County tonight, playing host to Reno 1868. This is one versus five in the Western Conference playoffs. The winner takes on Phoenix Rising Western Conference Finals. Let's go and bring you our starting lineups. They're brought to you by Subaru Orange Coast. Unchanged teams for both Reno 1868 and Orange County. Brian Brown scored the winner. He's got 17 league goals on this campaign. Gary Bailey. Yeah, well, it's more about the defense of Reno. They're very good going forward, of course. So we wouldn't have got to the stage otherwise. But so tight in defense, as we mentioned in the opening. One goal conceded in the last seven games, excluding the Las Vegas game. That is unbelievable. And for Orange County, we take a look again, unchanged. It's that threat up top. Thomas Innovolson on 20 goals, Michael Seaton on 15, and behind them in midfield, Aiden Quinn on 15 assists. <laughs> that's second in the league. Uh, just scoring goals for fun, this team. So, and that's, what, that's what's so exciting about this match. It's one of the best attacking sides anywhere in the USL up against one of the best defensive sides. Just about set to get us started. Match day referee is Victor Rivas, Thomas Enevoltsen. As the crowd starts to fill in here at the Champions Soccer Stadium, we've seen the attendance go up as the games have grown more intense. As we take a look at our injury report, no one to report for Reno as we're underway. One versus five, a place in the Western Conference Finals on the line as Orange County in their home blacks with the white and orange trim. Take on Reno 1868, going from right to left in their white away strip with the blue trim. As Michael Seaton tries to get us started. Given away and Gaia Bend winning the ball for Reno 1868, but it's given away there by Brent Richards. Opportunity on for Matt Spearman. Here's Anna Voltson on the edge of the penalty area. Returns for Spearman to score the fourth goal in their victory over St. Louis FC a weekend ago. The header in from Seaton, but straightforward work for Matt Persano. Yeah, Seaton doing well there to get on the end of it, but he was leaning backwards, couldn't get much. Uh much momentum on that ball, so it goes harmlessly through to the keeper. But interesting about this game is that they've only lost once in the last eight, Orange County, and it was to Reno. So you just wonder, sometimes in these sort of matches, there's a team that has your number. I just wonder if Reno has OC's number or not. A clash of heads there between uh, Michael Seaton and one of the Reno players. I hope they're okay. Looks like a bend in the center of the park. The Israeli Central midfielder, yeah, that was a bit nasty. Nothing in terms of malicious intent in that, but just in terms of contact, that is dangerous between a bend and Seaton and both players being checked for concussion. Well, that's commitment for you. This is uh, everything on the line type of game. And both those players showing that they're committed to the cause. And that's what you expect. So much for them. One, a win here, and they're through to the conference final. One more win. And it's true to the main final. So, so much to play for at the end of a, a long, hard season. And it will be Reno who will put it back in play. Matt Bersano in goal, a back four of Brent Richards, Zach Carroll, Brenton Griffiths, and Duke Lacroix. The midfield four of Seth Kasipli, Jerry Van e Evijk, Guy Ben, and Chris Wien, Antoine Opino, and Brian Brown up top. Orange County will also go with a 4-4-2 kind of setup with Andre Rawls in goal, Kevin Alston, Alex Pernali, Josh Hoifelt, and Joe Miko part of that back four. Darwin Jones on this right hand side, Richard Chaplow, Aiden Quinn, and Matt Spearman on the left as Pernali wins the ball back to Columbus crew. Loney giving away an opportunity now for Hopeno to try and slide in Brown but couldn't get enough purchase on it. Opportunity to sound though for Kasipli. Brown again with a tackle in from Amico. Well won. And this to finish out the teams. And if Olsen, who will play the ball now, Michael Seaton up top with Anna Voltson playing a bit more of the withdrawn role, but well read there by Lacroix, the ex Orange County midfielder, able to win it and gets tackled. Chaplo, and I believe that's a bend coming together as a bend did not like how Chaplo kicked out at the ball afterwards, perhaps into Lacroix, who goes down and it'll be a free kick. Yeah, a little bit of feistiness in this match, as you would expect. Here we see it again. There's no question it's a, it's a, a free kick. And yes, mm. there was a little bit of a foot left there by Alston. Yeah, it certainly deserves a talking to from the referee. But this is what you expect. This is a, a playoff match with so much at stake. There are going to be one or two slightly overzealous tackles, shall we say. There is the warning. Well done, referee. Just says, be careful. If you keep doing that, you're going to end up in the book. And 
and uh, Andre Rawls just lining everybody up there, make sure that no direct shot can get past him. And that way he can move across and manage his side of the goal. As there is Jerry Van Evek who puts Van Wolfgang on the back of his jersey, which is the combination of his last name and his wife's last name. After they were recently married. Three men in the wall in front of Andre Rawls as Van Evek will strike towards goal. And it was a decent effort, but high and wide of target. Yeah, decent effort, lots of power on it. The hardest, one of the hardest things to do with that sort of free kick is to bring it down. It's one thing getting it over the wall. How do you put topspin on and bring it down? That skill he didn't quite master in that attempt. As you take a look at our synchronicity keys to the match, Gary Bailey. Yeah, for Orange County, chances for Seaton. I mean, he got the hat trick in the last match. You've got to get the ball to him and good ball to him as often as possible. For Reno, I mean, one uh, one goal conceded in the last seven, if you exclude Las Vegas match, that's just phenomenal defending. And if they can keep the defense tight, if you keep a clean sheet, of course, just needs one little moment up front and you win the match 1-0. So two very contrasting skill sets. For Orange County, brilliant going forward for Reno, fantastic in defense. Lacroix charges on. The winner on this near side was Chris Weehan. Coming together with Darwin Jones and a free kick for Reno. A bit of that physicality that one might expect in a playoff matchup. I think it would be fair to say if you didn't get it, you'd be worried. <laughs> I mean, if you're not going to get excited and get stuck in in this sort of game, then when are you? See on that far side, Orange County honoring and winning the Western Conference in the regular season. That has earned them the one seed, the right to go through the playoffs as the host. And we'll go all the way to the final as well as the only team that would have hosted above them would have been FC Cincinnati. And they went out today to New York Red Bulls by a goal to nil. So if Orange County win today and beat Phoenix Rising next weekend, they will host the USL Cup Finals. The cross is delivered towards Van Evek. He cannot get a foot on as he wasn't expecting it to fall to him. The cross delivered there from Wien. will come for Lacroix who will loft in. A decent bit of service there. Way by Hoyfeldt. Lacroix again. It's been a good start by Reno. Nice and bright opportunities in the box. And really something for Van Evek there. If he'd uh, assumed the defender was going to miss it, he could have pounced on that one. But certainly they've uh, they've been good on the road. That's the amazing thing about this Reno side. They've uh, they've been fantastic on the road. In fact, and you can see already they're not scared. They're not worried, they come straight for Orange County, and they've had OC on the back foot. If you include their win a week ago against Real Monarchs, eight wins, eight draws, two losses away from home. Scored 27, conceded 17. So eight wins from 18, and a plus 10 goal differential is not bad at all, <laughs> particularly in this league where it's very difficult to win away from home. Absolutely, it's a fantastic record, but their win over OC recently came on home ground. This is now away from home. It might be slightly different for Reno, especially as the match goes on. Generally speaking, home sides get confidence as the match moves into the final phases. You get the sense of the home team must attack type of philosophy. We'll see if that happens in this match or not. Here's the Dane at Thomas Ennevolt, who finished the year with 20 goals and 10 assists. Very decent return for the 31-year-old. Joined the club in this offseason from Breda in the Dutch Eredivisie. And his ball over, over the top is out of play in the direction of Joe Miko. You mentioned in Thomas and Evolson, and you also added Aidan Quinn's goals along with Michael Seaton. When you put them all together, what is that? 46 goals between those three players. That is a phenomenal season. 31 assists as well. Wow. They include Aiden Quinn, who finishes second in the assist charts in this regular season behind only Emmanuel Ledesma of FC Cincinnati. But it'll take some good defending from Reno tonight to keep out this OC attack, that's for certain. Richard Chaplot, who is playing his final season as a professional with this club since 2016, but a long career in England down the pyramids for coming over stateside. 
pair of ex-Southampton players in this team, both Chaplo and Josh Hoyfeld. The quad, going to lose out, but able to benefit off of the ricochet, and Reno will charge on to Sipley. Red Richards down the line for Brian Brown to chase. Fill the very sizable scoring boots of Dane Kelly scored 17 times. Dane Kelly leading Reno 1868 into a remarkable inaugural campaign under manager Ian Russell, scoring 75 times in 32 league matches. They did go out in the first round of the postseason, so while not as high flying as they were a year ago, they've already been more successful in the postseason. You did mention something that I just uh, wanted to talk about a little bit is, is the experience of Orange County. You mentioned Josh Hoyfeld, 35 years of old, ex, uh, of age, ex Southampton, and Chaplow, his experience, and Thomas Eni Volson. Mm -hmm. Could that be the difference between the two teams? Is you've got three players in OC that have been there, done it, know how to manage the expectations, the pressures, etc. But this is knockout football, everything to play for. And those three, with their knowledge and experience, might just make the difference at the end of the day. We'll see some positional interchanges. Sibley comes in field. Opportunity on here for Reno 1868. Some power in this cross. And it was threatening towards goal. Out the other side for Lacroix. There's Wien. Decent right footed service, but Andre Rawls behind it and claims. Easy one there for Andre Rawls from Wien. Just washed it all the way, made sure nobody got a touch on it, no deflections. And easy for Rawls to gather up, but again. Nice intention from Reno. Griffiths. Zach Carroll away. Chaplow wins in the air and wears the captain's armband. And there you see Seaton wanted the ball played into his run rather than to feed. And Jones gives away opportunity on for Reno. Through Kasipli. Well read there by Amico, who's there to intervene. Quinn nearly giving away. And Evake. Stepping in the way. Jones. And Quinn. It's a long ball over the top towards Bierman, who at least gets his head to it. And it and strikes with his left. Persano behind him. Was there, a, was there a free kick there? A high, a high boot in the face? That's what they're claiming for Orange County. Bierman kicked in the face. And hopefully not too serious damage. Bierman did go up and try and win in the air, but if he were to give advantage, the situation that Anna Voltson found himself in, striking 20 yards from goal, it, you're probably not going to pull it back at that point. But if there is yellow, perhaps that can be dealt with afterwards. But again, a clash of heads. We saw one earlier between Abend and Seaton, and now Bierman, and it looked like Brent Richards Let's have a look on and that right-hand side. Does he duck his head? Oh, mm. no, no, that's a yellow card. Come on, please. He's lifted his foot so high. That's dangerous play. Well, it looks like Matt Bierman's okay, but uh, put it this way, if there was the um, the referee video. <laughs> there is a VAR, then uh, I'd imagine that, that would probably come under review. Yeah, I would think so. No, it would only be, it would only be to give a red. That's also a good point. It wouldn't be for a yellow, would it? And I'm not so sure that would be a red card offense. That's just dangerous play. But fortunately, Mass Bierman okay. And once again, it shows the commitment of both sides in this crucial playoff game. Brent Richards again, a regular in this Reno side, making his 29th start of the year tonight. Made 26 appearances and scored twice a year ago for Reno 1868. Both of these teams winning in the first round in very different fashions. Orange County, very comfortable at home, 4-0. Score the first through Seton. Then St. Louis FC have a man sent off. Comfortable from there, winning 4-0. Michael Seton hat trick. And they're through. Whereas Reno 1868 had a very difficult match away from home against Real Monarchs and didn't get the winner until the 92nd minute with 15 seconds left to play. In normal time. Looked like it would be an extra time affair, but a cross comes in. Brian Brown 
nods in from about 14 yards out, and Reno have got the win away from home. They have the flair for the dramatic in this postseason. Here's Darwin Jones. Loves to take defenders on. That's why he's in the team, according to Brayton Cloutier, as the challenge comes in on Jones. From Chris Wien, and it will be a free kick. Uh, we and just giving away a foul unnecessarily there. Be careful when you dive in and what you hope to achieve on Darwin Jones. He's coming back. He's not a he's not a real threat to you. And now you've got a set piece. All the big boys get pushed forward. And that I'd see Josh Hoyfeld get in there as well. And these set pieces, if the delivery is good, that can be really dangerous. And it will be Aiden Quinn over it. His 15 assists have come from set plays. Might this be another delivery into the penalty area? It's towards that spot. The header comes in and Kasipli away. It looked dangerous, but it's not really directed on target, but Kasipli deals anyway. Chaplow to try and play it back in, and now might the counter be on for Reno. That's a great free, quick, uh, free kick from Aiden Quinn. Absolutely brilliant. The way he puts it into the danger area gave his Big men, a chance to get on the end of something, and that was very, very close for OC. Chablo. Slide and challenge came in, nearly played in Seton, but I read there by Carroll. Boyfield has made a couple of nice defensive plays. Here's Kevin Alston. Men in charge, first time manager, Ian Russell, taking over Reno 1868 a year ago. Braden Cloutier in this offseason. Frankly, had a fully blank canvas as the ball is played over the top towards Quinn. Away by Richards, but only as far as Chaplow. And if Olsen in some space can turn and play it out to this right hand side. Jones with Olsen overlapping. Alex to cross it himself. Dealt with by Griffiths, but it looked like Alston might be there to recover at the very least. Plays it off of Griffiths, and you see Wee in there asking for cover with the overlapping run of Austin. Instead, it's a corner. Look at this. Look at this ball from Aiden Quinn. Absolutely right into the danger area there. Crignale and Hoyfeld going for the ball. If he can keep delivering like this, Aiden Quinn, he's going to give Reno all sorts of problems tonight. Austin offering himself as the short option for Quinn, but he will take the corner himself. Lofted in, the header away, but here's Jones. Looks to hold the ball with Alston. And Quinn again, just flicking it down the line for Jones, who tries the cross. And comes out for an Orange County throw. Just a bit of attacking impetus for the host at the moment. As Alston will take the throw. Jones trying to run into a pocket of space. Instead, it's Quinn who supported that opportunity. Sends the cross shot, shot cross, but it just flashes across and out for a harmless throw in. I think it was worth an effort there. Aiden Quinn, he just uh, he saw the, the goals open up in front of him, hit the ball in the half volley. It just it bent away from goal. But at this stage of the game and this important a match, if you can see the whites of the goalkeeper's eyes, have the shot. You never know. It might just fly into the back of the net. player in this team that was with Orange County a year ago is Richard Chaplow. Matt Spearman is playing with Orange County for a second time, but was with St. Louis FC a year ago. This goes to show the full-scale rebuild that Braden Cloutier undertook, and it's come off brilliantly. Not too many were expecting this side to finish top of the West. They've gone and done and played some brilliant stuff along the way as well as Richards overlaps on this right-hand side. 1v1 against Amico will go towards that byline, but there you see a strong 23-year-old. He's done a real job, and he's faced real competition for places as well with Alston coming in and Noah Powder and Kontor Awusu Ansa vying for those fullback positions as the long throw comes in. Wien just trying to dink it back into that danger area. Might come out, the cross is towards Brown, 
will fall for Chris Wien on the edge of the penalty area, who tries to turn. Kasipli will strike, will fall, and the shot comes straight at Andre Rawls. It's very poor defending there by Orange County. Balls coming in the box, not getting cleared. Defenders letting the balls bounce. I think that was Josh Hoyfeld waiting for his keeper to come. Absolute chaos there for a little while, and lucky not to get punished for it. It was open on with the strike. Griffiths. Game is for the right to play Phoenix Rising in the next round. They taking care of Sewell Park Rangers by four goals to two last night as Ben Evek tries to slide in Brown, but dealt with there as Didier Drogba made sure in the closing minutes of that one. Yeah, I love that, scores scores the fourth goal, goes and slides Jurgen Klinsmann style on the ground <laughs> and celebrating, but I, I think he's he seems to be enjoying winning with Phoenix almost as much as he enjoyed winning with Chelsea or any of the other clubs that he played for. He's loving every moment of it, and I think the players are loving playing alongside him, and a really good spirit there at Phoenix Rising at the moment. And there is a coming together with Alston and Lacroix. Lacroix frustrated, and Alston's going to see yellow. Coming together on that touchline. And Victor Rivas, for the first time, goes to his chest pocket and finds yellow for Kevin Alston. Alston having a go at both the assistant and referee alike. I'm not so sure it's just for that. It may be that there's been one or two before this, and the referee's gone, you know what, enough. It's an accumulation rather than a single instance there, because I wasn't quite sure. Let's have a look at it again. Yeah, he goes in late, and it's, but it's, it's, to me it's not enough for a yellow, but I think that's an accumulation of a few, a few, you know, mistimed tackles. And now he's got to be careful. Right? What are 20 minutes into this match? You're on a yellow, you're a fullback, you're one of those who has to defend and tackle. And they have to tread extremely carefully from now on, Mr. Alston. Maybe Chris Wien, who was USL Rookie of the Year a week ago, a year ago. And with that kind of performance, earned a full-time contract with San Jose Earthquakes, who is the MLS club that Reno has a partnership with us. Kasipli will play it here into the air for Opano, trying to work around the defender. Antoine Opano, and nearly there to benefit on the back post was Brian Brown, but it just flashing wide of Andre Rawls' goal. Another good chance there for Reno. They certainly have had opportunities around the box there. I'm just wondering if the Brian Brown could have could have got a foot on the end of this, comes across. Oh, he's stretching as it is. Yeah, he's, he's annoyed. You can see it from behind. He missed it only by inches as well. That's another warning for Orange County to be careful. They need to be tighter in defense. Another good chance for Reno, 1868. That front two is dangerous. Antoine Opano on 13 assists. Brian Brown on 17 goals. I mentioned the combination of Enev Olsen and Seaton. Opano and Brown have been similarly dangerous. Alex Cronali really got a good run of games here with Orange County. The 24-year-old on loan from Columbus Crew. Competition for places, real depth in this Orange County squad. You have Thomas Yul Nielsen and Walker Hume. Four of them have really been battling it out to be the preferred center backs as Cronali and Hoyfeld have been in this postseason. As Brown tries to take it down, the tackle came in though from Chapelo from behind. Very well done by the Englishman. And Beerman settles it with Amico. Just looking at the clock, we're a quarter way in to the game, assuming that there's no extra time or penalties at the end. And uh, I'm going to say that I think Reno have had the better of the chances. They've, they've really exposed a couple of of uh, poor poor moments of defending by Orange County and could easily have punished them. On the other end, Orange County not offering that much of a threat as yet. So. Here we go, Reno again. And poorly given away, opportunity on here for Reno 1868. Pull back for Van Evek, the or rather for Wee and the sliding tackle came in from Alston. 
And it came off a white shirt last. And out for a goal kick. But another a bit of danger there. And we are nearly there to pounce. Just again, Orange County just, just too relaxed in defense. And Reno, let's, let's give Reno some credit, looking really sharp up front. What was Mark Cotman up front? They're such a good defensive team, and they come out and <laughs> they look really good up front. So maybe I should rephrase it and say they're good both in defense and attack. You just say they're good. <laughs> this is a good footballing side. Certainly are. As we say that, Quinn tries to slide in Darwin Jones for Orange County. They themselves a very good footballing side. Quinn, first time for Anna Volson, tries to play it first time in the direction of Bierman. Away as far as Kevin Alston. Chaplow. Anna Volson would just like to come back to receive the ball. Another good ball for Darwin Jones to run on to. He won against Lacroix. Tries to get the better of him. And just ran out for a goal kick. Uh, Lacroix doing well. They're just, just little nudges, little bumps that put you off balance there. And uh, Darwin Jones unable to turn and get a cross in or even win a corner. And those are little subtle things that, that, that are experienced defending there from Duke Lacroix. Just little subtle pushes and shoves. And now it's a chance for him to get the ball and see what he can do going forward. Zach Carroll. Again, you know, doing very well to break lines. It's Kasipli. This evening's match is brought to you by Red Shell Foods. Hey fans, be sure to stop by your favorite local supermarket and pick up some Red Shell miso dressing, sesame soy dressing, and teriyaki sauce today. It's great on salads, sandwiches, pastas, your favorite meats, and as a dipping sauce. So give it a try. Redshell.com. Here's Quinn. Orange County just looking a bit disjointed at the moment. I don't play such good possession stuff as I thought for a moment the referee's deflection might benefit Orange County, but just settled there by Reno. Here's Gaia Ben. Joins from Louisville City. Mentioned that experience, one USL Cup with last year's winners as the offside flag is up against Chris Wien. You're certainly right about Orange County. Not, not as fluid as we have seen them. But you know, this is playoff, playoff football. It's one thing when it's in the league and you know that, yeah, okay, well, if we don't get a, a win today, we, we're top of the league or we'll, we'll make up for it next week. But as we all know, in playoffs, one bad day and you're gone. You pack your bags, you go home. And that, that plays with your head. You start to worry about it. You don't want to make mistakes. You don't want to take risks. And it certainly isn't an OC attack that we've been used to so far. Long way to go in this game. The other thing is that Regan Cloutier said that a week ago, this team turned in the best performance of the season. Even with the man sent off, he just said in every aspect of the game, we were professional. We did what we worked and built towards this postseason with, and it was said the best performance of the season, but it has not been that tonight as going down there was a bend charging forward from midfield. Referee waving play on. It's probably a good thing for Kevin Alston he did because of being on a yellow. As I said, he's going to tread very, very carefully, Alston, but something else that might affect this match and it was a comment made by matt Bassano in golf arena he said we're playing on house money no one expected us to get this far we did but nobody else did and maybe that's why they're Balls. so relaxed played towards opano but the offside flag had gone up against the frenchman so if that's if that's how reno see it they've got house money and they don't you know they don't have to prove anything all the pressures on orange county having finished top and everyone expecting them to go through. Maybe that explains why Reno looks so relaxed and so sharp up front, so solid at the back so far. The quad. 
joined Reno from Orange County. He played in five matches for Orange County a year ago, but one of them was a brace against Reno. Just wonder if Ian Russell saw that performance and goes, well, don't do that against us. You might as well join us. And if Olsen there to intercept and flick on very nicely, the ball is set in the path of Quinn. Aiden Quinn! 1-0 Orange County. Against the run of play, you'd have to say, but Aiden Quinn gets goal number 12 of the campaign. The move starts brilliantly from Anna Olsen. Orange County won. Reno 18-68-0 in the Western Conference semifinals. Brilliant finish there from Aiden Quinn. And he's done what he's done all season, sticking them in the back of the net. That just shows you how good Orange County are and why they do score so many goals. They've, they've struggled so far, and yet this one chance, Aiden Quinn, Beautiful ball played through, gets on the end of it, shields it, and he hits it almost in one move, shields it with one foot, hits it with the other, doesn't quite give Bassano a chance to get himself set. And they're 1-0 up Orange County at home with Phoenix in their sights. Braden Cloutier has spent the majority of this season lavishing praise onto Aiden Quinn. This is the player that he wanted to anchor his midfield. They gave him an extension midseason, and he has delivered. He started in each and every match for Orange County on this season and comes up with the goal that puts them 1-0 up in the semifinal. Openo going down. He thought he was fouled he, on falling on the ball. Touched it with his hand. You have to look at Aiden Quinn's stats of, of 12 goals in, what is it, 36 matches and say that's as good as most strikers in the USL and he's coming from midfield. We've just seen him tracking all the way back there to his goal line. So if he's doing defensive work and he's that good going forward, wow, could he end up being player of the season? He's got to be up there in the candidates if Orange County go all the way and, uh, and win the playoffs. You saw that stat fl flash up on the screen. 17 wins, no losses, two draws when scoring first this year, Orange County. And they can be a runaway train as you see a man down in the center of the park. It looks like Van Evake. Just as you said, Gary, that that production in terms of goal scoring would be towards the top of USL. You are very much correct in that. It would be joint 17th in the league. So a top 20 goal scorer <laughs> from midfield. In your midfield. <laughs> and you have two oh. players above him in the scoring charts in the same team in an Evolson and Seaton. Unbelievable. Orange County going forward, absolutely incredible. And that's what's made it so difficult for Reno, who in themselves are a fantastic defensive side. But now it's up to Reno to pull this one back and score again. So offensively, they're going to have to do really well here today, Reno. And there is Reno when conceding the first goal. They've managed to recover three wins and four draws, so. Not bad, not bad from a losing position. A draw would be enough to get you into uh, Extra time and penalties, so. But you do look at Orange County in their 20 victories so far this season have outscored opponents 63 to 16. So when they get going, it's hard to slow them down. As opportunity is on here for Openo on the edge of the penalty area. We'll slide it across here for, Le for Lacroix. This left-footed delivery is cut out by Chaplow. Well, here's the thing for Reno. If you want to be the champions, you've got to beat the best. And Orange County in the Western Conference have been the best this season. And this is the, this is the big sort of test for Reno. They've been best in leading. There is Ian Russell, who is examining the job on for his men this evening. But look at Orange County, the way that they've taken leads and ran with them. They scored six once, five goals three times, four goals three times, and three goals seven times. And they win, they like to stack it on. Here's Van Evek losing out. Run by Chaplow. He's got a bit of space. 
He's going to slide in Michael Seaton. He will run at Zach Carroll. Cutting onto his right, sliding in Anna Voltsen. Anna Voltsen with a touch around the defender to make it two. And it just goes wide of target. Anna Voltsen, you would have bet the house that he was going to score there. But just denied by inches. And he wasn't too far wide, was he? Once again, Orange County so sharp on that counter attack, so quick. They're passing around the box. Absolutely brilliant. And you're right, with all his history in Denmark and, and national caps, you would have expected him to stick it in the corner. But he didn't miss by, by much. And once again, it's a warning for Reno. You've got to keep yourself defensively tight. I know you've got to go forward. Ian Russell saying, yeah, one thing going forward, guys, and we do need to get another goal back, but you can't concede too much in defense at the same time. You see one tackle, and that's the threat that Orange County poses going forward. When they throw numbers in the attack, they combine just about as well as anybody in the league. As there you see Seaton doing a bit of defensive work and thought that he was fouled. Yeah, lots of noise coming from both benches. <laughs> to be referee, expected. Yeah, referee just calming everyone down and saying, leave the decisions to me, which is quite right. But tough for the coaches, so much on the line here, and they've done so well, both coaches, to get to this, this phase that they, you know, he's just saying, calm down, guys, calm down, let me deal with what I need to deal with. Not always easy when you're a coach and there's so much at stake. And Braden Cloutier certainly been in the ear of many a fourth official on this campaign. Quinn putting it in play. Taken down by Michael Seaton. Here is the Jamaican striker. Leaving it for Quinn. He cuts it onto his left. Tries to flick towards Kevin Alston, but it didn't quite come off. Cornali putting in a tackle. And here's Lacroix. Another tackle comes in from Chaplo. And it is a throw in for Orange County. Frustration there for Reno, felt that was a foul there. And things slowly moving Orange County's way. Reno not so sharp up front as they were in the first 25 or so minutes. When they had a two or three little half opportunities. They're struggling to get an attack against Orange County and they're conceding opportunities at the other end. But maybe this free kick will improve things and get them going. Uh, they're, getting up, they're getting upset, Reno. Yeah, Ben frustrated yeah. there that he didn't give advantage. He's got, to, he's got to calm it down, let the referee do his job. And then try to put it in play quickly and was denied that opportunity as well. I thought Ben had a case there. Giving the whistle early when the play looked on and straight away a Ben gives away. Opportunity on for Orange County. Seaton trying to roll in and it him, but that was not the right ball. Had Jones running with him in the attack as well. That looked promising and Reno 1868 are giving away some chances at the moment. You know, Orange County is so good in transition. They're so quick to counter attack. And uh, Enna Volson keeping himself on side. And if Seaton's ball had got through, Reno would have been in trouble again. So this Orange County team are well set up to catch you here. They can see how deep they are, but they transition into attack very quickly. Lacroix on this left hand side. 1v1 against Kevin Alston. Cutting on to his right. Strikes towards goal. Took a deflection on the way through. Or did it. It will be a goal kick. It's a bit awkward coming off the right boot of the New Jersey native Duke Lacroix. Yeah, it didn't look like his strong leg, did it? It's his, I think he's a natural lefty because he looked an awkward one with his right foot. Orange County Soccer Club is proud to be host for the USL Cup playoffs in the OC. Tickets are on sale now for a potential Western Conference final match on Saturday, November the 3rd. Would be against Phoenix Rising to miss exciting USL Cup playoff soccer. What has already been in a historic regular season for Orange County. Visit orangecountysoccer.com slash 2018 playoffs. Here's Darwin Jones. Will strike towards goal. Wow. And flashing past that top corner and striking at one of the advertisements in behind that goal as well. You saw the power in that strike from Darwin Jones. Very, very good strike that it wasn't too far off. 
and had a lot of pace behind it. It was really moving quickly. Yeah, just climbs at about a foot above the, the crossbar. Keeper scrambling there, Matt Bassano trying to get across. And it's all Orange County now. They, they're rifling shots in, they're counter-attacking quickly, they're defending much better. And Green are going to have to work really hard. And, and talking of that, in fact, their coach Ian Russell saying the work ethic is a big attribute of this team. And they are going to have to work extremely hard, Reno, to get themselves back into this match and get control of this game. Tugs of the shirt there from both Brown and Cronali. And the assistant giving offside, I believe, against Brian Brown, who was the first to touch the ball. Yeah, more frustration for Reno. Brian Brown lifting his arm, saying, what, what, what's going on? Was it me? They're just uh, they're getting, they're losing possession too easily. They're not, not able to attack and hurt Orange County at the moment. But they're only a few minutes away from a, a half-time break and maybe a chance to regroup for Ian Russell to try and do some magic and motivate this team to come out sharp for the second half. Jerry Van Evek and Wien. Jones shoving him off the ball successfully. And cleanly in the judgment of referee Rivas. Quinn trying to catch his defense out. Enne Voltsen in on goal. Thomas Enne Voltsen warding off the defender, sliding in Seaton. He was offside, though. The assistant's flag had gone up on the near side. What a save from Bassano. He didn't know it was offside. The keeper tracking across the goal and makes a brilliant, brilliant save from Michael Seaton. And I bet he wishes it wasn't offside. He would like to have claimed that as a, maybe a save of the week. I was a bit surprised that Bolton did not strike towards goal. I looked on for him, but here's Brown up the other end. Comes out to Kasipli. And now Brown with a little bit of an extra tackle. On the defender, I believe it was Cornelio who came across, and that's going to earn Brian Brown a yellow card. Yeah, frustration telling for Reno at this stage of the game. Just wondering with that previous chance for Thomas Eni Volson, whether, whether had he a shot, he would have scored. He assumed Michael Seaton had kept himself onside. He hadn't. So a missed chance for OC and a Reno player in the book. It is certainly going all Orange County's way at the moment. Which when you consider that it hadn't been for the opening half hour, mm. just goes to show the way that a goal can totally turn a game on its head. And that's what's happened here in the 11 minutes and change since the goal went in. Certainly early on, Reno looked fantastic. And, and there were concerns for me in the Orange County defense. Balls were bouncing around. There were opportunities for Reno. And the first 20 minutes, I'm thinking, wow, this, this Reno team is, is looking really, really good. But slowly, OC have worked their way back in. And, and now the contrast is it's all Orange County. They're looking confident. They're looking positive. It's up to Reno to get themselves back in the match. Tackle in from Seaton wins Reno a free kick through Chris Wien. Here's Brent Richards. Three minutes to play in the opening, 45 minutes. It's been a captivating game of playoff soccer. Orange County, this result holds, would host the Western Conference Finals against Phoenix Rising. Some game. Whew. Wow. Just what as. Reno away to Phoenix would be a cracking game as well. But I have to say on the balance of the regular season, Phoenix and Orange County are just about the best teams in the West. Van Evake going to create a window to cross. He does deliver. And it was a decent one. Opono getting something on it, but not enough towards goal. Here's Seth Gasipoli on this right-hand side. Towards that byline, low across, Brian Brown Always threatening around that goal, but Andre rolls. The NYCFC Loney claiming. Comfortable for the goalkeeper. Nice and straightforward. I was just thinking that if you're a Phoenix fan, or player, or management, you're probably thinking, well, I prefer Reno because it'll mean Phoenix are at home. Whereas if OC get through, the Phoenix are away from home. And uh, it's always an easier one, I think, as a player. You always much prefer to play your your game's at home, it's just a more comfortable position to be in. And I guess, as you say, on the basis of the season, Orange County a more dangerous team. 
open out. With Brown making the run, but not the right ball from the Frenchman, and Alston will clear. Brittany Cloutier thinks he is one of the best fullbacks in all of the USL, an MLS quality player in Kevin Alston. Acquired midseason, and went straight into the team. Flying straight at right back. Times has served at left back as well when injuries necessitated it. Throw in for Reno. Didn't have too much added on at the end of this first half. Open O. Heading towards that byline. The forearm came in from Jones. It was enough. Turn the foul on the free kick for Reno on the edge of that penalty area. Well, it's a good set piece in a dangerous position. And a perfect time for Reno to score if they could. Get themselves back on level terms. Referee doing a great job there. Explaining to the players what they can and can't do and the trouble they'll get into if they don't listen to him. Having you on the edge of the box there. Good ball in. There's a whole bunch of space at the near, near post there, which I don't know if they are going to cover that up, Orange County, or leave it open. Either way, it's a threat for Andre Rawls, and he's busy trying to organize things. So, can Reno do it just before half time? Rawls just getting his area sorted out. Two men in the wall just to cover on that near post. There'll be three minutes to be added on at the end of this first half. Here's the delivery going through that traffic, the header away. It was a good ball in, it was into a dangerous area. Reno just couldn't get someone on the end of it. And out the other end, the low cross in, and the touch towards goal. I believe that was Brenton Griffiths. Staying forward on the set piece, who got a touch onto it, but it was deflected away for a corner. Wow, a couple of little half chances there for Reno. Get the blood pressure up for all their fans. Another corner to come as well. Another opportunity from a set piece. Lofted in towards that back post. Who's one of their bodies in that back post rising, the low cross delivered. Easily cut out. Another fight at it might still be on. Seaton going down. The counterattack stopped there. It was open out. And he is going to receive yellow as well. So both strikers going in the book. For Reno 1868. This time it's open out. Yeah, Orange County just taking their time here. Looks like there is a little bit of an injury. And uh, with both strikers on yellow cards, that limits their ability to slow down attacks from Orange County in the second half. So Reno with a bit of a mountain to climb here, one nil down, away from home. Both strikers on yellow cards. He just left his foot dangling, hoping I didn't. He's a little bit there. He doesn't believe there was much in it, but decision has been made by the ref. I think it's a good time for Reno to get inside the locker room, calm everything down and, and rethink because they can see they're getting heated, they're getting upset. It's been a frustrating first half after, as you say, a very good start. First 15, 20 minutes for Reno were excellent and then they just seem to have lost their way. As Seaton remains down and that would be a big loss for this Orange County side if he's unable to continue. They have a variety of tactics they can go to likely probably being Thomas and Evolson going up top. Should it be required as Seaton is brought up to his feet. See he just favoring his left foot. He not really put much on it. Obviously love to carry on. Seems, seems like he's yeah, barely good. walk at the moment. Might just be a little bit of bruising which you can run off. That's what, that's what the Orange County fans will be hoping. I hope it's nothing worse than that. We are into stoppage time, which is presented by Synchronicity. Poifo will put it back in play. We're meant to have a minimum of three minutes, but with that had a bit of stoppage, we'll carry on. Here's Darwin Jones on this right-hand side.
Good work by Orange County there, just, just sort of blocking Reno, closing them in in their space, making it difficult for them to play out. Working really hard. Have a look at the black shirts. Putting pressure on wherever they can. Seaton is back on, so certainly a good sign for him playing in the second half. Four ball there, and a Voltsen winning in the air. Chaplo, they get something going quickly. I imagine Victor Rivas are bringing an end to this first half momentarily. Griffiths, but it was towards and Volson enough to send it towards Seaton. Might there just be one last chance on and Seaton again? And there you see the injury flaring up, and that would not be what Bring Cloutier would want to see at the end of this first half. But Victor Rivas does bring it into this first half. Orange County getting the goal through Aiden Quinn, and then took that impetus to create multiple chances afterwards and able to convert any of them. But Aiden Quinn, with his 12th goal of the season, has Orange County SC 45 minutes away from a berth in the Western Conference Finals. At the break, it's Orange County SC1, Reno 1868 nil. as we are at the end of this first half. 2018 has been a historic year for Orange County Soccer Club as we see Michael Seaton remaining down. That's certainly something we'll keep an eye on entering the break. Orange County already with the most wins and points in franchise history. Join the OCSC family by securing your season seats for 2019. Visit orangecountysoccer.com to reserve your spot and get ready for all the action of pro soccer. In the OC, we're into halftime, brought to you by Subaru Orange Coast. We're back with first half highlights and much more in the Subaru Orange Coast halftime report. Again, your score at the break, Orange County 1, Reno 1868, nil. At Hogue Orthopedic Institute, there is no one better at getting you back to you. County leading by a goal to nil at the break. We are in halftime brought to you by Subaru Orange Coast. Aiden Quinn with the goal that has Orange County a goal up, but some news coming in just as the half ended. Michael Seaton picking up an injury and it looked to have 
been aggravated in his attempt to try to play through it. So we'll see if Orange County will make a change at halftime. But Gary, we've had three games already in the conference semifinal round of the USL playoffs. So let's go ahead and run through the highlights of those games, starting first with the potential opponent for these two teams. That'll be either Phoenix Rising or Swope Park Rangers. They finished four goals to two in favor of Phoenix Rising. Jason Johnson opening the scoring. Uh, Phoenix Rising, so good in attack. But a little bit like Orange County there, some poor defending. And they actually found themselves behind at this stage. A real surprise, 2-1 down. A big, big test for, for Phoenix Rising in terms of their self-belief. But when you've got the likes of Didier Drogba and Asante and players like that, there's Drogba with the cross, Chris Cortez with the finish. So much talent going forward, which is why I think a lot of neutrals would like to see a Phoenix OC Western Conference final because they can both score goals from any situation and uh, here's another one that goes in a little bit of a deflection lucky and then we will also see a final goal from the man himself Didier Drogba and I hope this is a little Asante getting wide here I hope they show the the dive afterwards from Didier because <laughs> I'd love to see him and go seriously <laughs> you're gonna give us there you go there's the dive <laughs> That's more celebrating wonderful. a playoff victory oh, than celebrating the quality of a seven-yard strike. But Phoenix Rising win by four goals to two, beating the seventh seed. Swell Park Rangers are moving on to the conference finals. Let's go and take a look at the Eastern Conference. Both those results coming in today. New York Red Bulls 2 at the Nipper Stadium, winning by a goal to nil. And it was Amanda Moreno with the goal for NYRB2. That sends him through to the conference final. Yeah, it's a tough one for, for Cincinnati because they had such an incredible season. There were so much tears at the end and heartbreak for the players. And yeah, I'm with them on that. When you have a wonderful season like that, to lose it in a knockout match is, is extremely difficult. This was a this was a final moment. The referee just deciding, okay, that's it. And uh, absolute heartbreak for a Cincinnati side who have been unbelievable all season. They've been absolutely dominant, would have hosted the cup final had they gotten all the way there. But this will be their final match in USL. Next time we see them, will be in at Major League Soccer next season. And then the, on the other side of the bracket, as you see just there, the final scenes. Hattie Barrett, last off the pitch for Cincinnati, lamenting. The opportunity gone by to win a trophy in their final season in USL. The Cincinnati faithful absolutely crestfallen. Emmanuel Ledesma as well. They lose by a goal to nil. And it will be for a third straight year. New York Red Bulls 2 and Louisville City in the final. A pair of goals from Brian Ombi. There's the first. It will be the conference final at Slugger Field once again. Oscar Jimenez with the delivery on the first one. Neatly tucked away. Yeah, great first touch. Sets it up for the, uh, the the actual strike into the back of the goal. But they've had a very good season, Louisville, and certainly deserve to be where they are. Been fun to watch. There would be a chance on for Bethlehem Steel, who were the opponents on the day. Oh. A left-footed strike, and what a save there from Greg Ranjitsing. And he's had a good season as well, Ranjitsing. Good save there. Give the goalkeeper some love, Chris. They deserve it. <laughs> always always required when Gary Bailey is on the call, and that was a shot there from Chris Nanko. And here would be the winner. The ball played from Niall McCabe, the finish from Brian Ombi, and just as we credit the goalkeeper, Jake McGuire getting caught off his line, and Ombi taking advantage. Yeah, the, the keeper had to come, though, because the striker's got ahead of the central defender. If the keeper had stayed, could he have saved it? Maybe, but hey, give Louisville the credit. They did really well. So five teams left. Here's Ombi going for his hat trick, and McGuire making amends with a fantastic save. Nearly a hat trick there, and Brian Ombi absolutely bossing this game as Bethlehem Steel would try and fight back. There's Santi Moar striking from range. And Ranjitsing again had to cover. He goes bouncing off the frame of the goal, and it is Louisville City through to the next round against New York Red Bulls 2. Only one game left to be decided. We have 45 minutes of it left as Orange County lead Reno 1868 by a goal to nil. As Phoenix beats Swope Park Rangers by four goals. To, as you take a look at the results in the USL Cup playoffs in the conference semifinal stage. So it's Phoenix will be the opponent. If Orange County win, it's in Orange County. If Reno win, it's in Phoenix. As Phoenix are the three seed Cincinnati going out one nil and Louisville City 
beating Bethlehem Steel by two goals to nil. So that's your look at the second round of the USL Cup playoffs. Let's have a look at some of the best from the first round. Eight games, it was a cracking weekend of USL football. Slides it through. Here goes Moar into the area and it's in. Over to Holland. Cross bar and it's in. Will he strike it? He will and it's in. Rayleigh left foot missed it and Bethlehem Steel with a penalty kick shootout victory. On the ground by a man as it ripped in. Louisville scores. Davis tries to clip it back across. Illich. McCabe, his best strike from I mean, in all his years. Wall ahead, Saad gets one for Indy 11. Cameron Lancaster will try to dip this in. Oh, he did it again. St. Louis crashing numbers, ball gets through. C10, 1-0. Down on the ball went in, C10. This is Quinn in front, hat trick. Michael Seaton sets up Beerman. Beerman, Farnell. They are running riot in Irvine. Beyond the job, strike first in the 16th minute. Working it in, we'll send a hard ball in, and it's into the net, the game is tied. Cutting it back, here's a chance for Barry. So the number two seed goes down here. And that the best of the first round in the USL Cup playoffs. Now, a year from now, this will be the USL Championship playoffs as the league will enter a new setup a year from now with the USL Championship topping that pyramid, reaching more than 35 markets and 84 million people in 2019. Some new teams coming into the league. You, would be, you are watching right now would be the USL Championship. USL League One comes in next year with some new markets and some new players and opportunity, and then the USL League Two, which is currently the PDL. As you take a look as well, with news and notes coming around from the league, Lansing Ignite FC will be a founding member of USL League One. As we look at attendance, there's 60,000 fans wow. coming to the opening weekend. Eight games to be played. Phoenix and Pittsburgh Riverhounds with all-time record sellouts. It's been a terrific few months for USL. Certainly has. It's growing stronger and stronger. More teams joining, more depth, more organization, and a chance for, for really talented local players to work their way through and hopefully one day end up playing for the U.S. in the World Cup, which has to be the ultimate aim. Orange County leading by a goal to nil at the break in the Subaru Orange Coast halftime show. Aiden Quinn has provided the difference. It's Orange County 1, Reno 1868 nil. Strike 
and Orange County has struck again. Powder! He scores! And brings back Orange County. He's going to edge of the six and the header comes in! He scores! Sedford's a chance to put Orange County in front and he does! What makes my famous brisket, chicken marinade, and punch so good? A lemon lime secret ingredient I'm never going to tell. Seven up. <laughs> Who's hungry? Do more with Seven Up. Back from the Subaru Orange Coast halftime show, it is Orange County 1, Reno 1868 nil. About set to get started in the second half. Victor Rivas does indeed get us started. Reno going from left to right in this second half, wearing their visiting whites with the blue trim. Orange County going from right to left with the home blacks with the orange and white trim. As we did have a halftime change, there you see him in the center of the park. Christian Duke coming on for the injured Michael Seaton. That will certainly change things and also give some license to Thomas and Evolts to play a bit further forward. We'll see how it plays out. But either way, Seaton, a big loss here, Gary, to start this second half. Yeah, absolutely. Huge loss. I mean, the man who scored a hat trick in the previous game, uh, any team's going to miss that. But they're lucky they've got someone like Thomas and Evolts who scored 20 goals in the regular season. And behind him, of course, Aidan Quinn, who got his 12th today. So they've still got goal scorers. They're still going to be a huge threat to Reno. I think what I'm looking for here is, is Reno. What are they going to do? They're going to have to come at OC a little bit because they've obviously got to get the equalizer. They've got to keep it tight at the back against a very good attack. It's a tricky balancing act for Reno. As Aidan Quinn tried to slide in Darwin Jones, but gives the ball away for Chris Wien to recover. A bend, try to play it over the top towards Opano, but a bit of miscommunication there. And we'll say that's also the benefit of trying out different tactical systems over the course of a year. As Orange County at the start of the year were mainly going 4 3 3, 4 5 1 with Quinn, Koji Hashimoto, and Christian Duke in the center of the park. And so that's what they've moved to here tonight. So they would have experience as a midfield triumvirate. Coming in off that left hand side, the cross is dinked in towards Brown. He nearly got something on it with his left. And the Jamaican frustrated he didn't get more. Yeah, good ball in there. Gives him a little bit of a half chance there, Brian Brown. And that's what Reno are going to have to do. Lots of good service to those front two. Hope and Brown. And wait and see if they can get the breakthrough and get that ball pass on their rolls, which they weren't able to do first half. Free kick for Reno, 18-68. In after beating Real Monarchs in the first round by a goal to nil. It was a 92nd minute winner. Might that be required tonight? Brent Richards. Orange County was comfortable in the first round. Didn't look like it was going to be in the opening half hour, but after Aiden Quinn scored the opening goal, opportunities looked on to create more goals. None of them taken. Kevin Austin clears, but gives the ball to Duke Lacroix of Reno. You can see how deep Orange County defend here, how difficult they make it for Reno to find space. Every player, bar Thomas and Evolson, is right back in this final third of the pitch. And they really close down all those opportunities. Reno are going to have to really use the best of their ability to break down this OC team. See how deep Orange County are at the moment. That is a sign of things to come. Lacroix heading on for Wien, but stepping very well there was Kevin Alston. But as did Griffiths. Open O. Alex 
Crinale doing very well to use his big frame to stop Opino from getting onto that. Crinale is a very steady figure at the back. Homegrown signing of Columbus Crew out of Maryland. 17 appearances a year ago for Crew SC, but Greg Berhalter electing to loan him out for this year. And it's worked very well. He had 24 starts. So I'm playing in big matches for the development of young players. Playing in games like this is absolutely huge. It's crucial because you know these are the pressure games, and the higher up you go, the more pressure games you get, of course, until at the top level every game is a pressure game. But you've got to learn how to handle your, your sort of fears, your concerns, your angers. Players wind you up. All those things are just part of becoming a top-class professional. And these games certainly help in that regard. So Brent Richards will take the throw. Try and send it in long. Orange County have fallen victim at times to a long throw in this campaign. And it's sent in. Headed away by Amico and Evoltsen. And Duke trying to play for Matt Spearman to run off to it, but dealt with there by Richards. I guess if you're a neutral, what you want now is, is Reno to get the equalizer, really stir things up and have an awesome sort of playoff game. Obviously, if you're Orange County, it's the last thing in the world you want. Nice interchange there between Opano and Wien not coming off. Deeped over the top there for Darwin Jones. He might still get onto it. Advantage given there and eventually pulled back for the tackle on Darwin Jones. I believe it came from Griffiths. And Brenton Griffiths entering himself a yellow as well. He's going to draw the attention of Victor Rivas. Good refereeing. He, he actually played the advantage there because there was a little moment there where you thought Orange County are going to get the ball through called it back and now he's having a quiet word all excellent I tell you, <laughs> oh, that's not a yellow I'm not sure <laughs> but the referee giving him the benefit of the doubt there Brenton Griffiths Taking a chunk out of Darwin Whoa. Jones there it's a wild swing and that's what Richard Chaplow is arguing about saying how did he get away with that Good set piece here for Orange County. You know, again, if you're an Orange County fan, you would you would love the second just to ease your fears and concerns and stresses at this stage. Is it one nil? Of course, it's a, it's a very dangerous score and possible for Reno to get themselves back in the match. And Aiden Quinn to deliver, lofted in towards that penalty here. Hoyfeld trying to get the better of the defender, but it's just going harmlessly out of play. Yeah, two big units at the far post. And they're difficult to get on the end of it. That's a bad kick out, giving the ball straight to Orange County to come back. An opportunity on here for Beerman. Tries to slide it in at Volson, but snuffing out that opportunity. But as you said, four there from Reno. Orange County have had a few of those kind of half chances. If they play the right ball in, then they're in on goal. It just hasn't quite come off for them. We saw Seaton have one in the first half. Opportunities are there. Yep, they certainly have been. And they were there for Reno in the first sort of 10, 15 minutes, and from then onwards, it's been mostly Orange County. And Reno have got this, as we said, this double problem. One in defense, keep it tight. They still haven't done that yet for me. And the second part is how do you break down this Orange County side who haven't given too many goals away themselves? Not easy. But while Reno are alive, they've got a chance. Back to his goalkeeper, Rosano, and a bend. Walking it for Wien to chase. Might just get the better of Kevin Alston, you know. And it does come off of Alston last and out for a corner. Sort of out of nothing. You see Reno just a bit short on options. They're trying to go over the top. Time at least winning the corner. The center backs will come forward. Bend and Carroll difficult to deal with in that penalty area as it is lifted in. Easy header away for Chaplow. Only 
as far as Chris Wien. Last year led Reno in assists with 12. Reno, or rather, Bierman. Whistle had gone for a free kick for Reno, I believe, for handball. Bierman had started to kind of lose his footing a little bit. I think touched the ball with his hand. I think he did, but then there's claims for a foul the other way. So, yeah, Temper's getting a little bit frayed here, which you would expect. It is a huge playoff match, and the coaches are having their say as well from the sideline. But Reno at least positive now and trying to push forward and trying to get OC under some pressure. It hasn't worked for Reno yet, but it's a positive sign for their fans. Hoyfeld. And Chaplow trying to play a first time, nearly gave it away and did give away in the end to Van Evake. But Jones doing some solid defensive work. Chaplow just a bit short on options. Here's Darwin Jones. Just very well with his feet to get away from defenders. Bernali and Alston. Sending up towards Anna Voltson, but well done there by Griffiths. Seth Gasipli lofted in the path of Openo, who tried to nod it towards Brown, but he had drifted offside anyway. Brown frustrated there, frustrated that Openo maybe is offside or that he didn't get the ball directly to him. I think, I think Brian Brown is a, is a guy you want to get the ball to if you're Reno, big and strong and direct and, and frustrated, which means he's going to get stuck in there and try and get this equalizing goal. Nice passing move nearly coming off, but Duke not alert to the ball there from an Evolson first time. Here's Richards coming forward. We'll send it towards the area, but didn't get clean enough contact. Jones will start the counter. And Quinn tries to return it for Jones, who turns on the afterburners and gets to it. See the pacey winger, Darwin Jones. There's Quinn, the USL leader in passes completed with 2,312 coming in. As Bierman going down under the challenge of Carroll. Well, you mentioned Aiden Quinn. He's so comfortable on the ball. He, he's so good at passing. And he's good with set pieces. Now, doesn't seem like he's going to take the set piece. But when he does, he gets the ball into the danger areas. Lovely striker of a ball. And Quinn just getting his boots sorted. Ball put back in a play quickly. See Chaplow there, wanted to play in Quinn, but wasn't available. Here's on Lacroix, but only as far as Quinn, who's back alert to it. Into the path there of Cornelli in the air. He tries to slide it across for Bierman. Cornelli had stayed forward from the set piece and was a threat in the penalty area. Certainly he was. And once again, it's Quinn passing that ball into that danger area. And here he goes to take the corner. For me, he's been man of the match. You know, he scored the crucial first goal, but just his overall distribution, his impact on this game. If I was to give a man of the match at the 57th minute, pretty much Quinn would be my choice. This is a corner brought to you by the big ones. And brought to you by Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> As he will deliver. Lofted in towards that back post. Hoyfeld trying to get something on it. Might come out here to Christian Duke, who does manage to keep it in play, or did he? He did not. A oh, little bit of uh, coming little together bit of there afters. with Hoyfeld in a bend. Referee just trying to get everything sorted. There's Kasipli and Hoyfelt, fairly sizable size difference <laughs> between those two, but yeah. simply. He's asking the question, he's saying to Hoyfelt, really, the ball, the play was dead, and then you go and stick your boot in there, were you not doing it on purpose? Yeah. He actually got kicked himself, Hoyfelt, by doing that, but yeah, it's all part of the niggles, all part of the game, this is an important game, and if you get a chance to niggle the opposition, you take that opportunity. Marino, settle down, get yourself back in the game. And with Michael Seaton off the second half, hasn't been in as much of a handful for Reno as the first half was. So it's a chance here for Reno to, to really put OC under pressure and try and get the equalizer. 
Nearly an hour gone. The Aiden Quinn goal still the difference between these two sides. Want to try and break the lines cut out there by Joe Miko, the left back. Duke carrying on. Here's Christian Duke. Comes over from Swill Park Rangers. He captained that side. Team also that has done very well in USL playoffs. Wien and a bend. See Orange County trying to pack on the pressure, the fresh legs of Duke. They did start 29 times in the league in this campaign, so very much a regular, but Chaplow and Quinn, the preferred midfield combination. Richards, and a bend, but given away straight to Quinn. And a Voltson, but a bit starved alone up top. And he fake. Player in Holland through PS PSV and Vitesse, both Eredivisie clubs. Just touch a bit loose there. And fouls Richard Chaplow and trying to win it back. Yeah. OC doing well just to take the ball off Reno to, to make it difficult for them to play. And yep. It is the right time for Reno to try and make a change. And that's exactly what they're going to do. Freshen it up. Try a different approach. And it's Mark Gonzalez who will come on and Chris Wien who will come off. It's surprising to see a player of his pedigree come off in this game, but it is his night done. And so Gonzalez, the Canadian U23 international, will come on another player, formerly of Swope Park. That change is brought to you by Shire. Fernelli. Walking towards Bierman. So he's it's a deflected towards a black shirt, but cut off there by Duke and Oena Volson to try and hold the play up with Chaplow. Seen the press of Reno working in the second half and making Possession game difficult on Orange County. Quinn nodding down for Amico. Dinking for Bierman. Really losing out to a bend. And a bend caught a bit of Bierman in the end. Oh, actually, he was pulling it back. Bierman catching a bend initially. And a free kick for Reno, 18-68. Yeah, they're getting upset, uh, Orange County, with some of the decisions because they know that from these from these set pieces, it can cause them problem. I'm not so sure it was against Orange County, to be fair. But nonetheless, focus now from an OC point of view. Organize yourself, keep it tight. And from Reno, you've got to score soon. You've got to try and get this breakthrough. A little bit of, you know, a little bit of skill, a good header, a good set piece, and you're back in the match. And he baked to loft into the penalty area. Better away from Jones. And Evek again. Time from this near side. The cross delivered. Cut out there by Hoyfeld. Falls on the edge and the strike came in. Always going wide, but plenty of power and Andre Roll certainly felt threatened. That's better, Reno. Getting shots there just a little bit wide, but at least it threatens the keeper. It was a substitute, Gonzalez, Gonzalez. who got the strike. Yep. And that's what he's been brought on to do. And uh, a lot better for Reno. That'll get their fans off their seats. Head away. All the way back to Matt Persano, alone from San Jose Earthquakes. The real goalkeeper for most of the year, JT Marcinkowski, is actually in the preferred number one for the second half of the year for San Jose. It's the swapping of roles in some respects. As the challenge came in from Cronali, it'll be a free kick from Reno, and now Victor Rivas will have another talking to. Jones got to keep your hands off the referee. He just grabbed the referee and he turned to him. He's given Cronyole uh, a talking to. Doesn't look, doesn't look like he's going to give him the card, but he's just saying, be careful. The tackle on Brian Brown there, deemed to be a foul. And once again, a set piece for Reno. 
in what looks like a fairly dangerous position. And Ben Ivek, who's been over a majority of these, will go again. Despite the distance, we're all still setting up a wall. More men in it as well. Be about 30 yards from goal. Jerry Van Evek. The strike rolls down to his left and parrying aside. Well taken care of by the Orange County keeper. And a throw in for Reno. It's a good save, nice solid save. Pushes the ball away from trouble there, Andre Rolls. Look at it again. Yeah, he's got time to see it. He's got time to move across the goalkeeper. Decent save. Throw in came in. Tested in the penalty area. County numbers behind the ball and able to break out there. Griffiths Chapel trying to intervene, but it came to a bend who sends a crossing off of Hoyfelt. And now Chaplow trying to get it clear and did so. Amico and Duke trying to string passes together to break out of it as Quinn looks to have given away, but very aggressively tries to win it back in a foul manner in the judgment of Victor Rivas. The pressure's building, isn't it? You can see Reno, it's, it's set piece after set piece. So far, they haven't got that breakthrough. But if Orange County keep giving free kicks away in these dangerous positions, eventually, you would think Reno will take advantage of it. Now a free kick again. Van Evek. Wave numbers on. Send the set piece in. Cronali just letting it run. And now forced to play it and clear into the stand. And a throw in for Reno, 1868. A bit further up the pitch. You see Anna Voltson waving his players to come a bit further forward. So to get out of this. Defending for majority of the second half, Kasipli, Griffiths, and Carroll. A lie here for Richards. Onto his left, tries to send it low through. His delivery's just been a bit off tonight. And Amico away again for a throw. Mm. A bit of panic beginning to form there in that Orange County defense. You just wonder what impact Michael Seaton going off has had as Ian Russell watches his team try and get back on level terms. Because Seaton was such a threat that he was occupying Reno and they were having to be careful not to leave him on his own with him off. Look much more confident, Reno, that they can defend and keep. Richards, Gonzalez, Jones trying to get position, and he does, wins it off him. Here's Darwin Jones trying to beat him for pace. Look, Seattle Sounders two-man carries on his way, but Griffith's coming across and back healing To get away from Darwin Jones. There was almost no one else for Darwin Jones to pass to. It wasn't like it was someone available for him. Whereas with Michael Seaton in the first half, there was he was always there and always a threat. So I was making a run. Yeah, absolutely. So Thomas Enivolsa needs to do a little bit more for me now. He needs to be that that striker that is always available for the others and help OC play out of defense and reduce some of this pressure. Richards over the top. Away by Hoyfelt. And a bend. Mark Gonzalez scored 17 goals over two years for Shore Park Rangers. Richards just enough to get it to Kasipli. Didn't find the right ball this time. Again, low and, and hitting the first defender in the way. Bend. Lacroix. Real ball of the ball in the second half. Richards again finding himself, himself in acres of space again. Crossing in towards Brian Brown, just touches down for Gonzalez, the tackle in from Alston. And Lacroix unable to play it out, and now Jones with Lacroix at full stretch. A little slide in, and a throw for Orange County. They're taking their time, Orange County. <laughs> They've been under siege in the second they half. They have, they certainly have. And it's credit to Reno, who've been coming at them. 
what you want to do if you're Orange County is use the opportunity to counter-attack, transition quickly and get that second goal. And they haven't looked like they can in this, in this second half without Michael Seaton. Alston and Anna Voltson over the top. Beerman trying to apply some pressure to Zach Carroll. At least preventing him play back to the goalkeeper. He did manage to find the window anyway. And Persano clears. hearing that Mo Chow is the next to come on for Reno 1868 and there will be the change presented by Shire. No. Is Mo Chow. Senegalese striker who will come on. Simply makes way. Yep. More fresh legs, more problems for Orange County to deal with. As the clock is ticking, though, it's over 20 minutes left. And right away, Mo Chow tries to get a shot on target. I think it's a long time to try and defend this deep Orange County. They need to be pushing up from the back and they need to be holding on to possession. Once again, they've turned it over. And perhaps once again, we should say credit to Reno for putting that sort of pressure on Orange County. Another opportunity on, but Kevin Alston getting in front of Lacroix. Granoli clear for Quinn, and now this looks like a dangerous counter-attacking opportunity. Chaplow, but then a Volson bending his run. Instead, turning back, leave it with Jones. Chaplow just pressed the issue there and trying to play in a Volson. Instead, yeah. just trying to calmly keep possession. Too many opportunities to do that in the second half. Yeah, it's a different approach, obviously, for Orange County. They're not taking risks and trying to get a goal. They're rather trying to keep possession and calm the game down and take the sting out of it. And, and if I fully understand why they would do that, because they're one nil up and they want to see this game out. It makes a lot of sense. But they just they just need to stay in this half for a little bit. They can't keep defending. So, you know, stay in the half. Well, there's a bit of pulling going on there. Alston charging on and crossing towards Anna Volson will fall here for Christian Duke. Leaving it with Aiden Quinn. Cutting on to his right, still Quinn digging it for Christian Duke! And it lands on the roof of the net. What a ball through that was from Quinn. Leaving Duke unmarked and onside, but he unable to convert. What a chance there for Orange County. That's the chance they wanted to just put this game to rest. Aiden Quinn once again. A fantastic pass, as you say, absolutely brilliant. And Duke so close, so close to getting that crucial second goal. But for all the neutrals, it remains extremely tight and close. And I guess that's the way they would want it right to the end. That's exactly the kind of passage and play that you can come to expect from Orange County. That is what they're capable of. As Miko leaves it with Beerman and carries on his run. Amico to cross in towards Anna Voltsen, who still strikes towards goal. Might still be on for him. The tackle came in from Griffiths. That was a bit dangerous. Now Christian Duke unmarked in the air. Strikes towards goal again. But this time Carroll and Griffiths intervening. And Bersano catching. Oh, Christian Duke again with another little opportunity. So after just defending solidly for the second half, Orange County come out and have two little half chances. And open no foul there by Chaplow. Ian Russell saying, come on, guys, get everybody into this half. You can see that clock ticking. They've got to get that breakthrough soon, Reno. And that means bodies in the box. And try and get the ball to the big strikers. Game being played at such a breakneck pace, we can't even show you the replays of these chances. Here's Opino, lovely dink around Pyramid. Can he get the cross in? It's in, in low across goal, but cut out by Hoyfelt. Trying to poke clear, but just nobody there. Midfield bunkering in very deep at the moment. Openo again on this right-hand side. Against Amico, hits the cross right into him. Leaves it for a bend, do a cross first time towards that back post. And Alston just letting it run out of play for a goal kick. Yeah, it wasn't the best cross there from a bend. Had too much height, too close to the keeper. And eventually goes out of play. Frustration for Reno. 
seconds. They must know that they, they can see that big clock above Andre Rawls. They can see that 70 minutes plus minus left. And they just haven't really tested Andre Rawls enough for me. I'm trying to think of the keeper having made a big save. Not really a couple of half efforts, and that's about it. As this match is brought to you by Red Shell Food Safe and sure to stop by your favorite local supermarket and pick up some Red Shell miso dressing, sesame soy dressing, and teriyaki sauce today. It's great on salads, sandwiches, pastas, your favorite meats, and a snipping sauce. Red Shell Foods, visit redshell.com. Oh, thanks for that. Now you've got my stomach rumbling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to concentrate in the last 15 minutes. <laughs> Win for Jones. Outside of the boot for Duke. Lofted over the top towards Bierman. Here's Richards. Duke taken off it by Chow, and the referee, Victor Rivas, giving a free kick to Orange County. Chow upset with that and throwing hand signals at the referee again. Got to be careful. Referee's just trying to control everyone down. Doing a really fantastic job, because of course, tippers are going to get more and more frayed as the match heads towards the close. Orange County, set piece, and a chance to put some pressure back on Torino. See Hoyfeld, who might go forward in a normal situation. will play the free kick himself, and it's a wayward one towards Darwin Jones. Hey, why not just knock the free kick into the box? Why not try and hit Thomas and Evolson and have a go at goals? Trying to play that sort of pass type effort, lost possession. Now I give Reno a chance to come back at you. And now Quinn taking off the chest, can slide in Matt Spearman. Matt Spearman couldn't get the touch on it. Might still fall for him, but Richards, lucky that his clearance went off of Bierman and straight to Brasano. He was lucky, wasn't he? Once again, it just shows you how sharp Orange County are on the box, and it always happens when that man Quinn is on the ball. He is something else. He really has had a blinder of a game today. You can always pick out a pass. Bierman was making the run. If he hadn't lost his footing on the way in, he might have been able to settle that and make it 2-0 to Orange County. As it is, Mochao away for... Reno 1868, and Brian Brown Mark Gonzalez and Richards, who has found himself in plenty of space on this right-hand side. Leaving it for a bend. Feels for handball not given. Richards lofting over the top for Openo. Crossing into the penalty area. Waiting for it was Van Evake. Gonzalez. Griffiths. Thompson from the claw off a black shirt. It was Kevin Alston on the way through. Thompson from Richards cut up by Cronali, but only as far as Gonzalez. Orange County are defending very well, but able to keep it once they've cleared. Tackles him from both Chapelo and Hoyfeld. Free waving play on. A little bit of desperation from Orange County now, isn't there? They're just booting the ball clear, not even trying to keep possession. And that just brings more pressure back onto you. Openo. Some space thrown into. If you want to get Amico towards that byline, Openo just trying to get something in on the cross. But Amico's sliding tackle got something on the ball, and it will earn Reno 1568 a corner for Jerry Van Evek to take. I just think in the last five minutes, Openo has been very sharp on that right hand side. A lot of the attacks coming from him causing Orange County a few problems. And yet another set piece for Reno. Since Mochao has come on, it's been Openo playing down that right, and he's had plenty of joy as Benivek delivers the header away from Chaplo. Comes out the other side to Mark Gonzalez. Might he strike towards goal? Instead plays it towards Van Evek, who stays on that right-hand side after the corner. The left-footed cross is delivered. It's away by Hoyfeld. Will fall on the edge. The strike came in, coming in, and Alston taking a shot there. It remains down, and the referee is going to stop play. With Persano well off his line. And Kevin Alston. Yep, putting his body on the line, taking that ball full 
I assume, into his stomach or maybe even a more tender part of the body. That's what you've got to do. It's, uh, this is a playoff match. Everything on the line here. Reno now are just piling the pressure on, trying every way of getting this equalizing goal. And it's going to take a really good defensive effort from Orange County to stop them. I just get the sense that that breakthrough's got, got to come at some stage because there's too many balls going in the box, too many situations where it just takes the wrong touch or an unlucky touch and it's going to drop for one of the Reno players. And I guess that's what they're busy chatting about there, Orange County players and staff. And it's also because Orange County is so deep as well as we're going to take another look at that strike coming in on the edge of the penalty area was Griffiths and it wasn't the stomach it was his right leg that's left out and you just wonder if the power in that shot mm. might have shook a ligament or a knee or an ankle or something because he took the full brunt of that shot with his right leg out yep you're right it looks like that's what it was Normally in those situations, if you face the player, then it's your body that takes a hit. But he turned his back on the players, Kevin Alston. Put a foot out, and that took most of the sting out of the ball. But good to see that he looks like he's okay, or they're not moving too freely. And no. You have Noah Powder on the bench who can come on and play either of those fullback positions. And Orange County just allowing Reno to have the ball back, which is what was the case when the whistle was blown. Once again, it's just Thomas Inni Volston on his own here, just trying to slow things down. Very little intent from Orange County to come out of their final third of the pitch. Sam, a bit surprised that Orange County are this deep with still 10 minutes to play as Lacroix will deliver the service towards Opino. The header from Hoyfelt, Bierman trying to take it down. Around Richards. And we'll just send it long towards Inni Volston, but see the goalkeeper Persano 30 40 yards off his line and it kind of looks like it would if it were extra time in this kind of yep. scenario but still 10 minutes to play a lot of defending left Orange County to do as the ball is slid towards Brian Brown and a bit wayward and out for Andre Rawls to take a goal kick well we've spoken about this defending in the last third before it came up in the World Cup I think it was with Iceland they defended literally only in their third and it was very effective because there's no space uh, yes if there's a an, an unlucky deflection then obviously it falls uh, close to your goals but generally speaking it's hard to break down a team that defends in their final third and more and more teams play this way when they want to hold on to a lead so orange county just taking a leaf out of iceland's book by the looks of it i just wonder if that's necessitated by Michael Seaton's departure as you see Giovanni Ramos Godoy being prepared to come on for Orange County. Opportunity on for Lacroix to slide in Mo Chow. Mo Chow into the area trying to work around Cronali. Settle here for Mark Gonzalez. Cross delivered towards Brown, who was unmarked and needed intervention from Hoyfelt. Quinn just trying to get Anna Volson going. Just trying to get the bitter of Griffiths, who at least puts it out of play and out for an Orange County throw. Not sure what that head over heels thing was from Griffiths there, but maybe an attempt to try and get the foul. And it's Kevin Austin who makes way, so I guess the contact that he takes not for him to come off. I wonder if Ramos Godoy will come in and play fullback or maybe a bit of a tactical change, but it is Giovanni Ramos Godoy making substitute appearance number 26 on the campaign. Super sub. Almost exclusively, he scored four times. He's had five starts as well, but mainly used as a sub in nearly every match. Beerman and Quinn. Is there just the chance to pick out the pass? Duke, Frenna Voltson, trying to work around the defender as runners with him. Tried to slide in one of them, but couldn't quite sort out his feet. Who did that ball come from in the beginning? Quinn once again. Lovely ball in, spotted the two of them up front available and it nearly worked out for Orange County. Now it's get all the bodies back and defend. Gonzalez spraying it out for Openo. Gonzalez again trying to play the one-two. Openo going down. Maybe a penalty. Openo crossing. Referee not giving a pen there and cleared. And as far as Carroll. 
and Richards. And Russell pointing towards Openo. Takes a touch around Chaplow. Now Gonzalez will strike. Might have had eyes for that top corner, but a bit too much power on the shot. And now I believe that's Amico who will go down. Yep, I think it is Amico, and he, came, he clashed with Hopeno at a moment where for a second I thought, is that a penalty or not? Joe Amico claims that he was injured in the process. It should have been a free kick for him. Hopeno was hoping to get the penalty, and in the end, the referee gave nobody anything. I think he says he's okay. He's going to be all right. I think we've got six minutes left here, and it's time. The clock is running down. We know need to do something and do it soon. Orange County Soccer Club is proud to be the host for the USL Cup playoffs in the OC. Tickets are on sale now for a potential Western Conference final match on Saturday, November 3rd. That's next Saturday would be against Phoenix Rising. If they hang on to this victory, then it's exciting. USL Cup playoff soccer which has already been a historic season for Orange County. Visit orangecountysoccer.com slash 2018 playoffs. There you see Alston finally coming all the way back to the bench a bit gingerly and that would certainly put his status in peril for the next game should they make it to it with both Seton and potentially Alston facing injury ahead of that next one would certainly be big concerns for Bla Braden Cloutier should they hang on to this victory yeah certainly will be but Cloutier giving Alston a big hug there I think really impressed with his efforts and he was on a yellow card as well so another reason to bring him off and not take any risk Joe Miko just coming back on the pitch there so good news for OC and uh, it's now a case of can OC run the clock down for the next five minutes and added time, or can Reno do what they've threatened to do all second half and for the first 20 minutes of the game, and that's get their own goal. And so far, still yet a decent save for Andre Rawls to make. Maybe there was one save, in fact, to his left that he made. Other than that, he hasn't really been tested, has the OC keeper. As free kick is played for Beerman to settle. Shove from Duke, earning Reno a free kick. It was Openo who went down. And while there is no away goals rule, so it's not under considerable threat if Orange County can see. You just wonder what it would take for them to get switched back on and to attacking mode. They've been defending for so long. It's going to take some doing for them to come out of it. As the ball is played towards Chow, the cross is in, but. Rawls at the near post, read it, and caught it. Yeah, well done, the goalkeeper. Nice safe hands, just kills the game down. I'm not so sure that Orange County are looking to attack. I think if the ball comes their way, they will attack. But their, their game plan has been defend, defend deep, and try and counter. It's just that without Michael Seaton, they haven't been able to counter as well as they did towards the latter part of the first half. But they have defended well. Got to give Orange County credit. They've played this game perfectly. They've got the breakthrough from Aidan Quinn brilliantly and they've defended well and they haven't really given Reno much of a sniff around their goals yet still three minutes plus out of time to come Quinn and Chaplo the captain his final season as a professional giving the ball away Van Evake the window there if the right ball is played. There are opportunities here for Orange County. Brent Richards trying to slide it on the edge there for Chow. He losing out and bringing Chaplow down. Ian Russell frustrated. See the whistle against his striker. Well, with less than or just over two minutes or thereabouts left, I just wonder how many fans in the crowd are going. Right, where do I get my tickets for the Phoenix match <laughs> at home? Because that's going to be some match. If this result stays the way it is, that is going to be some game. Orange County against Phoenix. As you said, the two form teams in this Western Conference. And both with so much talent going forward. So many star names. Wow, what a match that will be if this result stays the way it is. Yeah, Bolton. Trying to take down, but this hold-up play just hasn't been as strong as Seaton's was in the first half. A bit starved up there as Richards 
Plays up top towards Brian Brown. And it goes all the way to Rawls instead. Brown wanted a free kick. Yeah, it's been a frustrating game for Brown. He, he really could see he's been he's been sort of gesticulating to his players and he's he's been frustrated the ball hasn't come to him, the ball hasn't dropped for him. And, but at least he's trying to put in a shift. You can, I, 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 nothing against players getting annoyed when they don't get service because it shows they want to make a difference. And he really has been trying, but he hasn't had much service to work with. Local back heel there from Brown. Chow with the cross. Cut out there on the back post by Ramos Godoy. And Darwin Jones can come out. Bit loose there from Jones for Quinn. And Quinn forces just boot it forward. One minute left in the 90. We'll find out how much is to be added on in synchronicity stuff. It's time. Carroll and Brent Richards. He lofts in with his left. Rawls coming off his line and had to get there and did. And instead of falling to the ground, tries to play Jones quickly. Now Quinn. Mike Rawls have just done better to just fall on it, but it's the ball played up towards Enna Voltsen, and it's now 2v1. Enna Voltsen onside. Can they seal it? Matt Spearman, opportunity on, onto his right. Bersano the save, still for Duke. Enna Voltsen in the penalty area, wide of target. That was the moment for Orange County to seal their place in the Western Finals, and it goes begging. What a chance it was as well. Matt Spearman, beautifully set up by Thomas Enna Voltsen. As you said, two against one. They really should have finished it off. The professional thing is they killed the game. 2-0, it's all over. Now there's this little opportunity for Reno. And tell me, when did they score their goal in the last match? In the 92nd minute well, with 15 seconds left to play in the game. Chaplow again to try and slide it in at Voltsen. The flag up for offside. And there you saw in the middle of all that, the fourth official holding up the board for four minutes to be added on in synchronicity stoppage time. Well, are Reno going to make Orange County pay for that miss? That wonderful opportunity there for Matt Bierman. Well saved, by the way, by the keeper, Bassano. But are they going to pay for it now with an equalizer by Reno? Center backs forward in the attack. Deals for handball, not given. Here's Van Evek. Openo staying back because of his lack of size. Ben trying to flick on. Comes for Richards. The left foot in towards that area, but at the other end of the play, it'll be a yellow card for Christian Duke. The substitute. Seeing yellow from Victor Rivas. Now again, Van Evek can deliver in towards that penalty area. I just think there's got to be something from one of these set pieces. How many free kicks and corners have Reno had, especially in the second half, and they've got nothing from it? Is this the moment when eventually they benefit from a set piece? It'll be Van Evek to take. Orange County have given away 17 fouls. Now Van Evek to deliver. It's a decent one. Rawls coming off his line. Didn't get to it. Might still fall. Overhead kick attempted by Carroll. Doesn't get clean purchase on it. Might Orange County be able to strike on the counter attack? Lacroix putting it out of play. Orange County can watch as the seconds tick by. That could have been the moment. Goalkeeper comes, doesn't get it. There's chaos in that box as if look at it again. Andre Rawls comes, does, knocks it down into the ground. Oh, big overhead kick there from Zach Carroll. Doesn't come off. And I wonder if that was the chance, the last chance for Reno now. Just, just over a minute left. Now then, no sense defending for Reno, 1868. You see the numbers forward in the attack. The header away, but it comes to Richards. Here's Openo. He'll now send it in towards that area. Ben flicking on. Carroll nearly there to pounce, but cleared by Amico. And Brian Brown. And Richards around Chaplow, charging on the right back. Brent Richards around another defender. Here's Brian Brown, left footed cross towards that back post. One in the air by Orange County's Darwin Jones. And now Ramos Godoy boots it in the proverbial Rosette. 
Here's my question for Reno. Why didn't they fight at the set pieces earlier on the way they're fighting now? Now they're creating opportunities from every set piece. They've had a whole bunch of them in the second half where they really haven't been as committed. Long throw launched in by Brenton Richards. Will fall here. And a strike in from Griffiths on the edge again from Openo. To a mass of bodies. Lacroix taking down. We're into the final minute of the minimum of four. Van, a Van Evek lofting in. The header nearly in, appeals for a penalty. But it's offside first against Mo Chow in the penalty area. Griffiths in there as well, and Ian Russell frustrated. Yeah. That might just have been the last meaningful opportunity of this one. Look at the commitment now by Reno to get in the box and cause problems, and that is, is it it? Not yet. But Reno, at least give Reno credit, they really have pushed in the second half. They've thrown everything at Orange County, and Orange County have stood firm. And it's that one goal that's going to separate them. So it seems that goal by my man in the match anyway, Quinn. Can Orange County seal it? Anna Volson has to just take this to the corner flag. He peels it back. And now Duke will take it to the corner flag. That should just be about it. Duke going down, Richards winning it off him cleanly. Is there one last chance in it for Reno? Brown taking a piece out of Amico, and that will do it. Orange County SC are on to the Western Conference Finals. The USL Cup playoffs now goes through Irvine. Orange County will host Phoenix for the Conference Finals. If they win, they'll host the Cup Final. It finishes Orange County SC1, Reno 1868 nil. Brilliant game. Aiden Quinn, yeah, gets the man of the match. I'm all in favor of that. Fantastic performance, set up so many chances, got the crucial goal. But you've got to feel sorry for Reno. That second half, they threw everything at Orange County. They just couldn't get the breakthrough. The ball just didn't bounce for Reno. But maybe we've also got to say, well done, Orange County. Defended superbly, got the goal they wanted, and they lost their star striker, Michael Seaton, in the second half. So Orange County will be delighted with that, and their attention now it turns, turns to Phoenix. What a match that's going to be. Orange County at home to Phoenix Rising. Can't wait for that. Tenth clean sheet of the year for Andre Rolls. And they defended for their lives in the second half. Orange County SC, as there you see, again, confirmation. Aiden Quinn, the scorer of the goal and the provider of many a chance for Orange County is our big ones, man of the match. And he turned in a massive performance tonight for Orange County SC. But they hang on in that second half to win by a goal to nil. They're through to the Western Finals. They'll take on Phoenix Rising in the next round in what should be a cracking Western Finals. Once again, your final. It's Orange County SC1, Reno 1868 nil. We'll come back with full-time highlights next. At Hogue Orthopedic Institute, there is no one better at getting you back to you.
Orange County SC are through to the Western Finals with a one goal to nil victory over Reno 1868. Aiden Quinn with the first half goal for Reno 1868. We didn't talk about that much in that post-match kind of craziness with everything going on there. What did you make of their performance and their second half effort to try and get that goal back after conceding? It was a good effort. It was a, a solid one. Their first 20 minutes, I thought, was very good. Their second half, they really did throw everything at Orange County. I just wonder if the commitment for those set pieces, if it had been as, as good as it was the last two or three minutes, I think they would have got the breakthrough. But in the end, you've got to give Orange County credit. They, they defended superbly well. They were dangerous on the counter. They maybe should have made it 2-0 on a couple of occasions. So for me, the better team overall. But early on, wow, what a chance here for, uh, for Brian up front, Brian Brown. Just inches away. Look at it from this angle. You see he's, oh, he is literally an inch away from opening the score. And here would be the opportunity for Aiden Quinn, a slid in by Seaton, turned in on the back post by Aiden Quinn. A wonderful combination up front. Beautiful ball from Michael Seaton, but first touch and an early strike from Aiden Quinn that just catches the keeper, maybe still settling himself. That's a great finish, and that's why this guy is such a special player. Coming from midfield and scoring like that. That would be the game's only goal, but let's show you the chance here in our post-match highlights presented by Destination Irvine. Another strike in. This one from Darwin Jones. A little bit high, not bad. If it had been another foot below, it could have been a golasso. Then, was there a chance? Did they make the keeper work? Reno, no. The answer is Andre Rolls didn't have too much to do. This one, a little bit of an effort, just wide of the goals in the second half. And Evek with probably the toughest save Rawls had to make down to his left, fairly straightforward. Yeah, it's a straightforward run. I think that's the only time he did have to make a save. And there was more opportunities. Aiden Quinn, watch this. Just the oh, lovely just ball lovely. through. Oh, Sublime. Absolutely brilliant for Christian Duke, and it just goes over. So if anyone was going to score a goal, you, you got to say the better chances still fell to Orange County in that second half, even though they were under huge pressure. And you just see the shortage of clear chances just even in our highlight package. Kind of highlighted Reno huffing and puffing, but unable to really threaten Andre Rawls' goal. Orange County get the clean sheet despite being out-possessed at home. 11 shots to 12 for Reno, but only two hitting target. That really just the story of this match. 12 shots and two on target for Reno. Yeah, and I think Orange County with less possession because second half they, they chose to defend. They chose to keep it tight and try and counter. And uh, for me, they have been one of the top sides in the Western Conference this season, along with Phoenix Rising, and perhaps we have what most neutrals would call the right decision, or the one they want to see as Chapla hugs his kids and family. And I can't wait for that. Orange County at home to Phoenix Rising. What a Western Conference final that will be. And you have to say on the balance of the season, they probably are the two best teams in the West, but Didier Drogba and Phoenix Rising will come away from home to the Champion Soccer Stadium in Irvine, California. The, the site for the Western Conference Final between themselves and Phoenix Rising in the East. It'll be Louisville City and Bethlehem Steel. We'll get you the full bracket in just a moment. We'll talk about postseason soccer in the Los Angeles area. You've got both, you have LAFC into the playoffs in MLS. You have LA Galaxy who can win tomorrow and get in. Now Orange County hosting the Western Conference Finals here in the USL, and there you see it. Orange County one, Reno nil, Phoenix four, Soap Park Rangers two, Louisville City two, Bethlehem Steel nil, and FC Cincinnati nil, New York Red Bulls two, one. And that is the final four, Orange County, Phoenix, New York Red Bulls, and Louisville. Gary Bailey, who is going to be playing in the USL Cup Final? <laughs> wow, it's gonna be so hard to call. What's your oh. call? What's your call? Come on, Gary. I'm going to go Phoenix. Really? Okay. Louisville. Phoenix, Louisville. Be a cracking final, <laughs> wouldn't it? November the 8th is the USL Cup final. You can watch it on ESPN2 from 8 p.m. Eastern time. You're going to want to check that out. Orange County, though, are one win away from hosting that game. They beat Reno 1868 with FC Cincinnati going down earlier today. They are now the top seed left in this USL Cup playoff. If they beat Phoenix next week, they will host the USL Cup Final. That'll just about do it for us. Orange County beating Reno 1868 by a goal to nil. Aiden Quinn, the hero on the day. And Orange County SC are through to the Western Conference Final take on Phoenix Rising. For our terrific USL crew and my broadcast partner, 
Gary Bailey. My name is Chris Whittingham signing off. Orange County and Phoenix is your Western Conference Final. We'll do it again next Saturday from the Champions Soccer Stadium. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League may not be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League.